Paul's First Missionary Journey. Hi, my name is John, and I want to tell you about Paul's First Missionary Journey. But first, let me ask you if you know what this is. Everybody who reads the Bible should be able to look at this and instantly know what it is. It's the Holy Land. Up at the top, there's the Sea of Galilee. Then it goes down the Jordan River, which flows into the Dead Sea. And then this area over here is the Mediterranean Sea. We'll just put some squiggles over here to uh, make that look like the sea. And then this little dot here, this is Jerusalem. Never draw a picture of the Holy Land without Jerusalem. But we start with this because once you have this, then you have kind of a hat to hang all your geographical knowledge on and uh, a way to reference everything else as you learn. If you don't memorize something simple first, it's a lot harder to remember stuff. But we're on Paul's first missionary journey, which doesn't actually take place here in the Holy Land. So the next thing we want to do is kind of get a feel for where it is. And so here is uh, the bulk of the Mediterranean Sea. You can see Tur Italy over there kicking the boot. And then there's Greece and Turkey. And this island here is Cyprus. And then there's the land of Israel. That's where that uh, we just drew that layer there. And then Egypt. And of course, this is the Mediterranean Sea. But we're not here to look at the whole Mediterranean Sea. So we want to zoom in a little bit. And uh, here we go. We're moving in. And there's the Mediterranean Sea and Israel and Cyprus and what is modern day Turkey. But we actually want to move in a little bit more just to the northeast corner of this, because that's going to let us get a good feel and a good picture of Paul's missionary journey. So here we go with Paul's missionary journey. It's in Acts 13. We read that the Holy Spirit set aside Paul and Barnabas for a mission. So the people prayed over them and sent them off. This started in a Syrian city, Antioch. And this is going to be important because Saul and Barnabas are going to visit another Antioch, which we'll get to in a minute in the region of Pisidia. So first they travel from Antioch, which is inland, to a port city called Seleucia on the east coast of the Mediterranean Sea. From there, they sailed to the island of Cyprus, and they landed at the port city of Salamis on the east side. This is a major port city on the island of Cyprus. There's one on either end. So the Bible tells us they taught in the Jewish synagogues, and John Mark was there helping them. They worked their way all the way across the island of Cyprus to the city of Paphos, which is the port city on the west side of the island of Cyprus. Now, in Paphos, Paul and Barnabas spoke with the proconsul, who was a learned man, the Bible tells us, named Sergius Paulus, because he had asked them to come and share God's word with him. Now, there was also a magician there named Elamus, and he tried to turn the proconsul away from the faith, but Paul, being filled with the Holy Spirit, made Elamus blind for a time, it says. And then Acts 13, verse 12 says, Then the proconsul believed when he saw that. So that's kind of interesting. that, the, And, and we, we read this, that... The signs and wonders accompany the preaching of the Holy Spirit. So from there, they sailed northeast to a city called Perga, which is in modern-day Turkey. Somewhere in here, John Mark left them and headed back to Jerusalem. And when we get later in the book of Acts, if you're going through the whole book, you will find that that comes up again later with Paul and Barnabas trying to decide about that. But anyway... Uh, John Mark left and headed back to Jerusalem, but Saul and Barnabas continued on to another city called Antioch. And this Antioch is in the region of Pisidia, which sets it apart from the other Antioch, which is over in the region of Syria, which is due north of the land of Israel. And so, you know, this kind of thing happens. Cities have the same name. So in Pisidian Antioch, after the reading in the synagogue, they were invited by the ruler of the synagogue to offer a word of encouragement they might have for the people. So Acts tells us Saul stood up and shared about how Jesus of Nazareth fulfilled the prophecies of the Messiah, including the religious leaders turning against him because they didn't understand the very things they were reading every Sunday, every Sabbath, excuse me. Evidently, this caused quite a stir because at the next Sabbath service in the synagogue, attendance was through the roof. And then we read in Acts 13, verse 34, that the, Jew, the Jewish leaders were jealous and began speaking against and trying to discredit Saul and Barnabas. But Saul and Barnabas spoke boldly, and it says the word of the Lord grew. But the Jews who were against Saul and Barnabas stirred up the leaders to drive them from the area. 
So Saul and Barnabas left and headed for the city of Iconium, shaking the dust from their feet. Now at Iconium, they spoke in the synagogue again, and many believed, but there was also opposition. God was doing signs and wonders through the apostles, but the city was divided, it says, for and against the apostles. The disciples, it said, stayed in the city, preaching boldly for many days. But when they learned that some of the leaders were plotting to have them stoned, they left Iconium for Lystra and Derba, cities in the region of Lyconia, where they preached in the cities and in the surrounding countryside. And then at Lystra, a crazy thing happened. God, through Paul, had healed a man who had been crippled from birth. Then the people started saying that the gods and these are the Greek gods, had come down to them that Barnabas was Zeus and Paul was Hermes. Again, these are Greek gods, by the way, which is interesting because this area is ruled by the Romans, but the Romans had a different set of gods, but they let the people keep their own gods uh, as long as they submitted to Roman rule in general. The priest of Zeus even tried to offer a sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas. The disciples were understandably distressed by this reaction and continued to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. But the Jews from the other cities they already visited, Pisidian Antioch and Iconium, came down and persuaded the people to stone Saul, after which they dragged him from the city and left him for dead. Well, it turns out he wasn't dead. And the next day, uh, Saul and Barnabas headed for Derby, where they preached and made many disciples. Then it says they headed back through Lystra and Iconium and Pisidian Antioch, encouraging all the new disciples and appointing elders in each city as they went. Then they headed back through uh, Pamphylia, which is the region where Perga is, and they preached there. And they also headed over to a city called Atalia. And from there, they headed back to Syrian Antioch, where their journey had begun. All this happened about 48, 49 AD, and people who like to sit down and calculate these things figure they were on the road for about two years and included probably, and this, this is uh, an overly accurate estimate if you ask me, but 58 travel days. So that is Paul's first missionary journey in a nutshell.